Welcome back everybody to Huobi Live. My name is Ducko, your host this evening, and tonight we are joined by a very special guest, Dean, the CEO of Agoric. How are you doing, Dean? Welcome to the stream. I am doing really good. Thank you for having me. Awesome, awesome. Really looking forward to it. And shout out to everybody watching in the official Huobi Global app. Shout out to everybody in the live chat box. Please leave us comments. Let us know which country you're watching from and how you're feeling this evening or day, depending on which part of the world you're from. And I do believe we, there will be a candy drop during this live stream. So please, please put up your feet, grab some snacks and enjoy the ride. Yeah, yeah. Now, Dean, I, what I, I want to get started first for the people who don't know you. Please, could you tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, and how and why you decided to get into crypto? Sure. Um, I started um, a long time ago. I worked on the first production smart contract in 1989, where these ideas oh, wow. of smart contracts were just starting. Um, and, you know, it was all been driven, you know, literally, you know, for Agora, the company vision has been driven by the same thing, which is software enabling people to cooperate. Yep. Right. So, you know, smart contracts allow strangers to cooperate. And that kind of cooperation um, is, is something that was new in the world. We got it with, you know, the Ebays and PayPal's and all those kinds of things. But but now, you know, blockchain enables us to get more of it and enable more, you know, DeFi cooperation and, and basically get a more cooperative world. And that's what got me into it. <laughs> Sorry, my, my microphone played up. So. Now, with, with crypto, what was the very first crypto that you ever got into, though? <laughs> I had lots of arguments about Bitcoin, but I really got into crypto, um, you know, about five years ago where where it was um, where we were excited by, you know, the Polkadot and the Cosmos of the world, yep. where there was a toolkit for building more blockchains. You know, the, 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 you could take a consensus engine and then build more amazing stuff on top of it. And um, uh, and and so we we knew that you know we knew what we had to add to the world was above the consensus layer, and we wanted to work with uh, teams that, that that already were deep into the 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 consensus part of the system, the things that Cosmos, uh, for example, already does. Okay, cool. So now you're the CEO of I hope I pronounce it correctly. Agoric, Agor, Agoric. How do you pronounce Agoric. it? Yeah. Agoric. Agoric. Yeah. So can you tell us a bit about Agoric and what makes it unique? Sure. So first off, just in name history, it comes from the Greek word agora, which means the open marketplace, right? And and the Agoric Open Systems papers were written by my co-founder, Mark Miller, in 1988, that really articulated the idea of software agents creating and participating in markets. So it's part of the crypto canon that lots of people um, uh, read and, if, and anyone out there who hasn't read it, they're fascinating papers that still uh, uh, are, are, are inspiring today. Um, so Agoric is about smart contracts, right? Software that is enforcing the terms of a contract-like arrangement between third parties. Mm -hmm. And that's what enables uh, people to cooperate is the software orchestrated and enforced the terms of their arrangement. But to make that really blossom in the world, it needs to be something that millions of programmers can do. So the Agoric platform enables writing smart contracts in JavaScript. So instead of tens of thousands of developers, it can support millions of developers that millions. already know how to program that. And that's going to be the big difference for getting from where we are to mainstream use of, of, of blockchain and smart contract is enabling millions of developers. So, so can, could you give us an example of how this could benefit a developer? One of the millions of developers, just oh, an example. Sure. Yep. Yeah, I, I, how about I give two? Sure, what as is, many as you want. <laughs> there's a lot of people um, in, you know, that work at, at, you know, the, at, 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 at banks or at brokerage houses, you know, Morgan Stanley's, all those kinds of places that are expert at financial technology. They've got lots of great ideas. They have built lots of stuff. Mm -hmm. And they looked at blockchain and went, this is not ready, right? It's got too many security hazards. I'll go work at my buddy's, at my buddy's hedge fund instead mm -hmm. until your development tools are kind of farther along. Those people, when they look and they go, oh, JavaScript, that controls a trillion dollars now in, in, in brokerage terminals. I can build with that. I can use my current tools. Mm -hmm. I can use my current testing. I know how to ship that. That I could do, right? Similarly, on the NFT front, Right. 
all of the innovation in sports sites, fan sites, engagement with customers, sales sites, all that, yep. you know, is being innovated now without blockchain in the web two space in the world, right? There are fancy music sites and those are all being innovated in JavaScript, right? It's being innovated by JavaScript programmers, enabling those people to go ahead and build the smart contract piece and do something custom for them instead of having to go and find one of the one of the rare and expensive smart contract developers right now. Which you know, can be very time consuming too. Exactly. Time consuming, slow, security ridden. But now I can hire, you know, the, the programmer I already know to build my website and we want to enable them to be able to build, you know, smart contracts as well. Nice. So nice. Much bigger growth. All right. Did you want to give us another example? Because you sound like you had well, a couple the two, more. Well, the two were the, fin yeah, the, the two were like, you know, the fintech developer being able to roll out the next generation of, 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 of DeFi with, you know, where they're already experts in, you know, mm. options and derivatives and all, all these things, but they've built lots of stuff. And then just, you know, people that are doing the, in the NFT world, both of those, you know, th those are, those are very different di vertical spaces, mm. but they already have literally millions of programmers that write in JavaScript that can do this stuff. And so we want to empower those people. So any mainstream application right now probably has a JavaScript developer nearby <laughs> to help build it and make it usable by normal humans, right? We want to enable those people to build the whole thing, right? If you can build, if you can build a web app now, you ought to be able to build a, a web three app, you know, in, in, in a year. I must say, I love your enthusiasm, your energy and your passion. I mean, you should be on TV more often, I think. <laughs> You've probably we been do told have that, have you? A lot of videos on our on, on on our channels that you can get from our website. So so uh, there are a fair number of videos of either me or someone else here. You know, there's a lot of us that have been doing this kind of technology for a long time, yep. and we've done a lot of shipping disruptive technologies out to mainstream markets as well, right? You know, the the, mm. the you know my previous gig was a multi billion dollar payment instrument, and you know this is all about you know ha having computers help people and smart contracts. You know, and the and the smart contracts we're building on it, mm. you know, are things that um, uh, you know that that are just really exciting to us. And I can see the excitement. I can feel the excitement emanating from you <laughs> on the other side. <laughs> I love this stuff. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, could you talk about the team and and its history? Sure. I, I mentioned myself um, since you know. 89, I've been doing lots of large scale distributed system stuff. Yep. My co-founder, Mark Miller, as I said, wrote the book on uh, on on uh, some of this distributed system technology back in 1988. And we've collaborated um, with other people that are now at Agoric in a variety of different uh, environments and different companies. We've had people that, you know, Mark has been on the JavaScript standards committee for 15 years. Mm -hmm. Our COO, Mike Jablon, took a voice over IP from zero to $2 billion a year in revenue at Time Warner Cable when voice over IP was innovative and disruptive. Um, we have people that were in, uh, you know, out, out of Lucasfilm games that did some of the early, you know, early games, you know, Chip Morningstar coined the term avatar, right? Yeah. Um, uh, we also have, you know, um, uh, a couple of uh, young folks out of Stripe or out of Google or out of you know various other places that have that, that have been doing payments or or business applications or user interface infrastructure, yeah. um, you know all sort of the pieces you need for the end to end of you know I don't know if you you our mantra of you know build fast earn fast right being able to have you know JavaScript and libraries and a component model and all the kind of modern framework things all the way through to, yeah, how do I deploy this as a business? And how do I do a user interface that can interact with a customer and all those sorts of things? That that whole journey, we've got people that have been been, been working on different parts of that space. So so we're very excited to be able to, you know, bring that end to end uh, 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 ability to, 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 to build and ship stuff out to the world. Yeah. So, so with the name, I was actually going to ask you this before that last question <laughs> there, but with the name Agoric, um, is does that how did you come up with that like how did you decide that i mean are you greek or do you have a background that's <laughs> greek or you got, you got the greek mustache happening so maybe i'm onto something here but or is that a secret that, that you can't talk about the... no 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 i'm not greek i'm 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 half swiss but uh yeah. um uh no so so as i said it comes from the the, the agoric open systems papers so this was an inspiration of mark miller and eric drexler um, where you know how do you how do you identify that open systems 
and marketplaces together are very powerful. That, 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 you know, economies are not here. Everyone run inside of this box or everyone run, everyone run on this single blockchain or everyone do things all a certain way. They're about multiple systems loosely coupled, you know, cooperatively engaging in commerce and trade and, and, and whatever it is whatever it is they do. And that's, you know, an inspiring model of freedom of, you know, free choice and free open networks where people can, you know, do what they want to do and cooperate with people successfully. Mm. Um, and so, so it was just, it was just an inspiring, you know, vision that, 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 that those two in the community around them had about how should software help humans cooperate, right? It's not, here's the rules you have to follow but here's enabling technology so you can choose to engage with other people out there and you know that's the that's the kind of world i want to live in nice me too i'm with you all the way on that one <laughs> so on that note how how exactly will agoric attract developers to grow on its ecosystem so the, you know so as i said the 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 model is you know rather it, smart contract or platform you know sorry platform for building smart contracts um, but building them in, in hardened JavaScript so lots of developers can participate. But it's more than that. It's, you know, JavaScript was in browsers and experts could do really cool things with it mm. for, for several years. But then systems like React and Vue came out. Um, these are frameworks in JavaScript for building applications, for building user interfaces, that, that, and, and they enable and, and leverage the object-oriented programmers of JavaScript to really enable a component environment. And six months after these frameworks came out, amateur developers could do a better job, um, you know, more responsive, more internationalizable, more adaptive, more interactive application mm. than, than experts could the year before. Really? Because of the framework allowed them to grab components from other people and pull them together. So you could have an artist grab a slideshow and a credit card processor and plug them together and deploy a new art site for themselves, <laughs> even though they could never build that slideshow. And so we do the same kind of framework, only now it's for trading assets and pricing and exchange and escrow and all the and auctions and all the kinds of things necessary for rich applications and rich economy. Mm. And 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 so it's you know, you can program with familiar tools in a familiar language. You can afford to hire more programmers and you get to use this compositional model so you can grab the components that we've already built or that other th other people in the ecosystem that are not at Agoric have already built. So for example, yep. right, um, you know, we have uh, folks that are building, a, you know, there's a case study of someone who built a hierarchical NFT system. What, what's a hierarchical NFT? What right? is it? That's, what is that? I, that's right. I've got a game character, right? Right now, you 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 do these NFTs. It's a board ape or it's a chimp or whatever it is, and they're smoking, and you don't want that, right? You know, it's here it's, I've got a I've got a game character, and then I can buy a different mask or a hairdo or a background or you know or if it if it's part of a game character, the magic items. Mm. You know, I acquire them some way from other people, I get those as NFTs and I can go, this is really valuable and I don't really need it, I'll sell it, or I've got two or whatever it is, right? Yep. And I can equip them and now my character is an NFT itself that I could sell that ha or trade or what have you that has all the NFT equipment that I have, right? You know, so you've got, you've got this, 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 you know, not the simple model of this was randomly generated this way, but instead I can engage in mm. construction and put together an NFT that's just like I want, right? Mm. And those are small smart contracts that could now be reused for lots of different purposes, whether it's, you know, games or art or collaborative art or, um, the NFTs are bills of lading and I'm attaching packages onto an NFT that represents the bill of lading of an entire cargo cargo container, right? So there's all these kinds of mechanisms you might use that new rich notion of property. Mm. And yet I get to pick it up as a library and just use it, right? And I can take it and I can grab a governance component and now I want to be able to take this cool new kind of thing that is this hierarchical NFT character and I'm going to auction it off, but I don't know how to build an auction. So I'll grab an auction component. And you know, this one's well reviewed and it's been security audited oh, really? and all that sort of thing. So it's that kind of thing where we can get a component model out there that pe that's the kind of modern framework people are used to for building rich and fancy applications. Only now 
um, uh, I can do it with, 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 as I said, these business components. And it sounds like it's or a lot easier. Component. Exactly, exactly. A lot easier and a lot safer because these have been already audited. They plug together with good, with good interfaces, right? It really does earn the term, you know, uh, um, uh, DeFi Legos, right? Or yeah. governance Legos or NFT Legos or whatever it is. So user-friendly and it's, uh, what's, what's that word? They, um, I forgot that word. When you're onboarding someone, uh, seamless. Seamless. Yeah. Seamless. Well, I, I had a great, uh, one of our advisors, you know, Naval, he was like, you know, um, uh, it's like, wait, wait, you know, you're saying too much. Programmability. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, programmability. programmability. <laughs> yeah. That narrows it down. So speaking That's of programmability, right. um, what projects are currently building on Agoric or are there even any projects building on Agoric at the moment? Absolutely, yeah. Um, so I'll, I'll start with, with two in the spaces that I mentioned and then I'll end with the, the big one that we'll transition to. Um, so if we had a conference in um, May, uh, the Gateway, Gateway uh, conference for you know sort of Cosmos ecosystem, and two of our projects actually presented there. So it wasn't just that they're building on it; they're building on it with you know with deep enough understanding of the model to teach other people. So one is this hierarchical NFT project that I mentioned, which then published a case study mm -hmm. about what it took, what they built, how you might use it, and there's an artist that's using it to build up this rich space of NFTs. Um, and so that those those components are now open source and part of the ecosystem and reusable by other parties. And there's people that have expressed interest. Um, and they will be again presenting at upcoming events like uh, the next Cosmoverse in, in, in Medellin. Um, and, uh, and then there's a, 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 another project that um, is building a lending platform, you know, a compound like, nice. you know, uh, lending platform. And they're using components that, that, that have been built for other purposes as well. Um, some of them for, as, as, as um, backing components that, that are part of the IST project. Um, mm -hmm. So that's the third one. And that's really the, the first one to roll out will be the inter stable token, the inter protocol. Um, and that is a set of smart contracts and smart contract components that are all reusable by third parties, that are all reusable in other projects, as seen by this 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 lending platform. Yep. Um, uh, but it is to do a um, stable token that is it that is you know deep part of the Cosmos and Beyond ecosystem, the interchain ecosystem, where it can bring assets over the interchain like Atom or Osmo or what have you over the interchain to the Agoric platform, use them as collateral to mint IST, the interstable token. And then you can take IST over to other chains to spend them, buy things, um, you know, put them in yield farms, put them in pools, whatever it is that those other chains are doing, they can now use a stable token that is backed not just by their local assets, unlocking the power of their local assets, but also by all the other assets in the interchain. Okay, so, and so I, that's pretty exciting. So IST is the stable coin, correct? IST is the stable token. Yep. Yeah, and, and that is that. I a... refer to it as stable token because coin or not, I don't care. True. <laughs> no, you, yeah, yeah, you're true. You got a point. You got a point. Um, all right. So, and that's out now. No, no, that is in the. You know, we're in, in, in last test phases of that, and that'll be coming out. Uh, you know, so the code is available. It's open source. It's on test networks. We're doing test bridges with other projects, um, and that'll be coming out in the next month. In the next, you know, a little more than a month. Okay, so it's not too far off. Cool. Not too far. Yeah. All right. And so, that's, you know, that's not just Agoric working on it. That's other people outside of Agoric. I mean, this is an ecosystem. The power of, of, of you know, blockchain ecosystem and the power of decentralization is it's not just us. <laughs> there, are, <laughs> there are other groups that are pushing elements forward because they see the vision of, of this programmable world um, and they're excited by it. And so it is a long term project with lots of people. Um, you know, helping to to push this vision forward because it's one that inspired them to get into crypto in many cases. Um, you know, the, the the vision that drives this inspired the whole interchain architecture and inspired the IBC protocol itself mm. before we were even involved in, in in blockchain, right? And so there's a there's a there's a long history here. So there's a lot of people behind it pushing. You, you gave us an example earlier about games and NFTs. Mm -hmm. Are you by any chance a gamer yourself? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh huh. And what's your favorite game at the moment? If you have, uh, well, if you have a favorite game at the moment, that's I, I'm asking because I'm a gamer as well. Okay, so so 
I really love collab uh, uh, co-op games. Yep. Um, uh, you know, you're know, playing with my friends, not against them. You know, I'm all about software helping cooperation, right? So, you know, in my game, <laughs> yeah, theory. right. Yeah. So, so, um, uh, you know, so uh, I, I, the the ones that I have played regularly over the last uh, uh, many years are probably Diablo the most. Oh, really? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. And uh, I used to play Warcraft. I don't play now. Mm. <laughs> uh, and uh, and there's a, there's a few older games because you know the main thing is I have only a little bit of time to play and I play it in order to spend time with my friends that are remote and so you know older games work just fine for that yeah. um, you know I have uh, I have installed Elden Ring I think it is but uh, but uh, oh. mostly I have friends come over and play it and I haven't touched it it's boring bro it is absolutely boring I, okay, I downloaded yeah. it and I played it for 20 minutes and I was like nah it was too slow and clunky. <laughs> Not for you. Yeah, yeah, Too yeah. slow and clunky. And I didn't know that other players can leave messages in the game. So I thought the messages were the game instructing me, like a oh, tutorial. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. No, so no, then no. it said, walk this way. And there was a cliff that went all the way down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Smart ass. <laughs> yeah, and so I went over it and I died. I'm like, are you serious? It instructed right, me. Right. And then I found out it's not the game. It's peop other players that leave him there. That's right. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, no. So, you know, I think the last ones that I played were like Dungeon Siege. Because yeah. that's sort of an old standard that, you know... You know, I like Flash and Sizzle, but I really like gameplay. And yep. it had good gameplay that we enjoy, and so and it's got a replayability. And, you know, so same same with Diablo. It has gameplay that I enjoy. And, you know, and so, um, uh, you know, and, and it and it fits in my time budget to be able to play. So Yeah. Didn't didn't a new one come out a few months ago as well, Diablo? Well, well Diablo 3, you know, Diablo 4 is in progress. Uh, oh, so still? I've mostly played Diablo 3. Oh, yeah, Diablo 2 came out, which I have and I haven't played yet. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Diablo 2 Revisited or whatever it is. Now. Revisited. <laughs> All right, so now the Inter Protocol is the first launching on Agoric. Could yep. you tell us a bit more about it? Be a bit more specific, though. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, the, the, you know, the critical thing to us is, you know, we're building a new economy. And we understand we're building a new economy, right? The, the, the Agoric economy was always envisioned as, you know, you want... People, you want, you know, the build fast, earn fast needs, you need an economy to launch your business in that has people and that has, you know, that, that has a stable token because we learned thousands of years ago that economies work better with the grease of a stable token, a stable currency, whatever you want to call it, to be able to grease the wheels of commerce, right? Mm. And, um, you know, and you can do this model of Ethereum and others where, you know, they're paying for routine services with a speculative token that's volatile. Right. And you can do that, but it's like paying your rent with Apple shares. You know, it works, but it means you're not sure whether your rent is twice as much next month or or, 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 or you got a discount. Right. Because it depends on the price of this fall of the last. So it's just sand in the gears of commerce. And so we have always been on this path to roll out a stable token that really is stable. And it's all it's not about, you know, sucking profits out of the stable token. It's about greasing the wheels of the commerce that we all want to grow. Um, and so that's what IST is. And it was it was envisioned where, you know, we would start by having it backed by build and then by other assets on the system, mm. you know, and then we got into the Cosmos ecosystem. And it turns out we had inspired the inter blockchain communication protocol. And it was sort of, you know, had this vision of, you know, independent, isolated islands of simple, straightforward programming in a sea of asynchronous communication. And, you know, in that environment, we can bring Adam over and over as collateral and so forth. And so the whole model of this CDP style, MakerDAO style uh, stable token, that is a robust, robust model for how people do currency, right? I mean, much of the currency in the physical world, the fiat yeah. currency you get out of governments actually comes from real estate deals where I've got an asset that's going to go up and down in value and I borrowed some money to be able to pay for it, right? Oh, and that yeah, that's a whole can money. of worms. That's another can of worms. If you, <laughs> if you want to open it, feel free to open it, but that's no, a whole no, other no, can no. of worms, it's man. An analogy that helps, it's an analogy that helps people understand how you can have, you know, $200 worth of Atom mint $100 worth of IST against it. The Atom goes up in value, but your IST is robustly backed, right? Mm. Or, you know, and so, and... Uh, but the vision of IST, like the vision of our overall system, is about pluggable components. So we've got, you know, so we'll have the ability to mint with vaults of, of volatile collateral, 
right, which is, you know, the robust way of having a large scale stable token. Um, we've got pluggable components to do different styles of liquidation, but we'll also be able to um, uh, uh, take USDC or other kinds of reference stable coins yep. that people already have and be able to bring it and convert those over to IST, right? You know, transfer them into IST. So now if you're in the interchain ecosystem, you could just use IST, even if you're starting from, you know, DAI or USDT or USDC or whatever it is, any of these things that are, that are you know, robust tokens, bring them in up to some debt limit and, and they could potentially be honored in the system. And that'll be determined by the ecosystem and by the community is exactly which collateral types, which stable tokens can be used as reference, that kind of thing. Mm. But the model is this extensible, growable thing because economies are live things. They grow over time. We're learning over time and we'll be able to do more and better kinds of mechanisms for robust, solvent, uh, uh, backing for uh, for for stable tokens going into the future, mm. and so the whole evolvable pluggable model is critical to having something that's going to be able to survive more than you know and and, and thrive with a growing economy. So. Oh, yeah. So, where could communities go to to get involved? Do you have a website, socials? Absolutely. Hit me. So agoric.com is our website. Yep. It's got you know high level intro to a bunch of the ideas and concepts. Yeah. Um, we have, you know, I think at Agoric on Twitter, and you know, we're in we have a Telegram group. But if you're an, if you're a if you're a builder, join Discord. We, that's where the communities of builders are to, that are that are building smart contracts in this platform now. Yeah. Um, and as we, you know, we'll talk more about the, the the roadmap. But as we roll out, you know, first inter protocol and IST, then chain permission rollout of additional things where like this nft infrastructure or lending platform what have you is the kind of things that the community might get excited about where the core contracts when they're once they're rolled out can be used for multiple purposes by multiple people and then eventually completely permissionless uh, uh access those are sort of the the big phases of the rollout over time of the agoric platform mm. and then the other website to go to is inter.trade i-n-t-e-r dot trade that's where the extended community in the interchain is talking about the inter protocol and that's you know and, and off there you can get to the governance forums you can get to there'll be upcoming forums for more general discussion you can get to discord twitter telegram you know sort of the usual the usual the usual suspects but we have people live there um that are that are excited to talk about this stuff wow nice now what i wouldn't mind doing is just having a quick look at your website going through it together and uh i might read it out to the viewers to the audience and at any time if you wish to stop me just jump in there like a lion and stop me if you want to <laughs> add some more information to it before before you forget so i don't want you waiting until i finish going to the website because you might forget so just stop feel and free i'm to such stop a me. shy and retiring personality but you know <laughs> <laughs> so yeah feel free to stop me at any time as i go through this so agoric.com to the audience watching build fast earn fast now that's a catchphrase i really like because that's what i'm all about i like to get in and out and next that's <laughs> yep absolutely. that's me so i'm part of your target market here already just from the first get-go all right so a a proof of stake chain utilizing secure javascript smart contracts to rapidly build and deploy DeFi. Why you'll build faster? Well, you can save time by using a pre-built smart contract components and dApps. They're secure, composable, and let you get your project out the door pronto. Now, and you probably also know the already know the programming language. Most likely, <laughs> you can build faster if you don't have to go learn this strange programming language. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Which takes us back to seamless and ease of use. I like that word, seamless. So, now we have the um, composable library. So Agoric offers a library of reusable composable components coded by experienced community members just like you. JavaScript first, use familiar tooling to build smart contracts in secure JavaScript. As you grow, be confident of hiring your pool of experienced developers won't dry. Secure architecture by eliminating categories of complex security bugs, Agoric provides builders with a safer environment to quickly harden your contracts. I will jump in there. Yep. So one of the most important ones that we talk that we, you know, 
Brian Warner is one of our engineers. He was on the security review committee for Ethereum and pointed out that reentrancy was going to be a problem. You know, at this point, I think people estimated we've lost nine billion dollars to reentrancy bugs, right? Really? And you know, so so there's a lot of interesting, well-hardened programs on Ethereum, but wow, we paid a price for it. So that is not the place to innovate. Right. You know, that, that, you know, that, that, you know, we can take the programs that are there and bring them over to these, you know, uh, these, these new EVM areas, but innovating in solidity is very dangerous. Mm. Right. So now the other thing I wanted to mention, you talk about secure JavaScript a bunch. We have since renamed that hardened JavaScript. I hadn't realized that we still had secure JavaScript so many places. The yeah. nice thing about hardened is focusing not just on security, but on, you know, non -deter on determinism, you know, and, and sort of general system robustness. Um, and so since that hardened JavaScript is now, for example, become the, the standard approach for embedded systems JavaScript, if you can believe that, right? Watches and washers and dryers and light bulbs all mm -hmm. have JavaScript in them. Well, they have our hardened JavaScript. So, so, um, uh, so it's a thing. <laughs> wow. So I was just having a quick look at the live chat in the official Huobi Global app as you were talking. I was having a very sneak peek because I can't resist myself sometimes. And I, was, I, I did. I am looking at an interesting question. And if you don't mind me asking, it's to do with Agoric, of course, and yes. with gaming. And this question comes from someone called Meta Troopers. And they're asking, I'm actually curious about this too. Does Agoric benefit more to gaming developers? Yes. Um, so there, there are a couple of big important ways we benefit to gaming developers, um, and you know, and it's still early days, but obviously, you know, Tendermint, uh, 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 consensus engine, you know, five second blocks, fast finality. That's critical to be able to move things along quickly um, for doing you know rich transactions. Um, JavaScript is something that lots of de gaming developers, you know, 80% of them already know and program in, and there's a lot of games already built that way in game infrastructure. Um, and they can build the smart contract infrastructure and the smart contracts that they want to use for their gaming stuff in the same tooling and in the same environment that they're building the front end for their games for that they're building the front end for the website for their game store, mm. right? So they already have the expertise they know to be able to build not just the game, but to be able to extend it to the parts that are, that are you know, critical trading infrastructure or their new property model for how they're doing, you know, magic items or what have you. Um, you know, it took um, a, a, an engineer like three days to go from, we support uh, fungible tokens, non-fungible tokens, and then we added semi-fungible tokens where I can have an issuer that is issuing, you know, magic weapons, whatever it is. Yeah. And there's the NFTs that are unique magic weapons. And then here's the ones that are uncommon and there's 500 of them and the common ones of which there's 10,000. And the common magic swords are all fungible with each other, but they're not fungible with the, <laughs> the, 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 the uncommon ones and vice versa. Yeah. And that turns out to work well for what you actually want to do in gaming where fungible tokens don't quite work and non-fungible tokens don't quite work. So you have a bunch of, you know, clumsy new standards in, you know, Ethereum or what have you for doing, you know, this 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 mixed hybrid kind of environment. Mm. But for us, it was a simple new abstraction. All the existing escrow worked, all the existing, you know, auctions worked, the wallet worked for it. So that all these components that people already build, when we enhanced how you could do property, it just worked for that, right? Um, and you know, and and that that same model of semi fungible token was originally inspired by a hackathon entrant that was that did um, recycling credits like carbon credits, where you know you could have 40 tons of of aluminum recycling versus 10 tons of of plastic recycling. Aluminum was fungible with other aluminum mm. uh, kilograms, and and uh, you know plastic was fungible with itself, but plastic and aluminum were not fungible. But they were all issued by the same vendor, and so you know that that same model works for you know concrete, high-end industrial applications or gaming. Right. Yeah. That was a very good question by Meta Trooper in the official Huawei Global app. Thank you for that. Thank question. you. That was a great question. Good question and great answer as well. Very good answer. <laughs> <laughs> so back to where we where we were. Uh, now we've got market services and cross-chain assets. Is it easy access to liquidity and DeFi services, including treasury vaults, governance, and the automated market maker? We have uh, cross-chain assets, bringing assets from the Cosmos and 
I say Ethereum networks directly to your project, a world of users and opportunities at your fingertips. There is also resource management where gory components help keep your focus on building your application, not on complex protocol integrations and third party code. So the website goes on to state, we've been working in smart contracts for decades, literally, <laughs> yep. as you mentioned earlier at the start as well. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Since long before it was called blockchain, Agoric was founded on open source principles optimized for a booming collaborative and public <laughs> economy. And that's what we love. <laughs> and that's how you'll thrive in the Agoric that's economy. Right, that's right. Yep, right? yep, exactly. Now, yeah, one of the things, part of the, you know, one of the things about blockchains is, you know, it's always been, you know, what's your value capture story? When we were going and raising money, it's like, what's your value capture? How are you, you know, how are you, how are you capturing any value to the, to, to, to your base token? And especially for, for proof of stake systems, mm. um, it is actually critical that the value of the underlying token grows with the amount of economic activity on top of it, because otherwise you won't have the proof of stake security that everyone is relying on to protect them, right? That's mm. actually an important element of the engineering design. It also means it, it, it would be good for for token holders or rather people that are actively staking their token in order to participate in the economy. But it's critical for the engineering architecture of the security of, of proof of stake. And so for us, right, it's not about my it's not about extracting rents from gas fees. That turns out to be a bad idea. That's like, you know, rewarding. Uh, you know, getting excited about economies that put more traffic on the road rather than transit more business, right? Mm. Yes, growing the business in your area might put more traffic on the road, but the traffic is not the goal and the traffic is not the thing you want to pay for. Right? Um, so for us, we, we pull, we, you know, we, what the reward comes right now initially from staking, you know, sort of direct new minting, which is sort of standard and proof of stake for a bootstrap period. But the goal is... IST rewards coming from the economy. So all the fees for, you know, what, what small fees there are, the fees for minting IST, the local stable token mm. in Agoric, those fees go into a reward pool that are distributed out to staked build holders, right? And okay. so that means that as the usage of IST, as the amount of economy, now primarily this was envisioned as on the Agoric platform, but now it extends to more of the interchain, as the amount of economic activity inspired by this infrastructure grows, the amount of rewards grow, which means that, that it, 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 it is attributed to the staked build in the system that's enabling this environment, enabling these smart contracts to function. Um, and so that's sort of the, 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 the integration and the way in which IST is intrinsic to the overall Agoric platform. Mm. You know, it is its own thing. It will have its own legs, but it's intrinsic to the Agoric platform, both because it provides rewards to the build holders and because it's what is used to pay for execution on the, on the, on the uh, Agoric system, on the Agoric blockchain. Wow. So, which brings us to the public chain. So... Where market participants bid to have their transactions confirmed by validators, stakers delegate their native staking token to validators to incentivize the correct execution of transactions and are rewarded for securing the network. So proof of stake. Yes, yeah, so a proof of stake. So Agoric has its own token, right? Yes. And that token mm -hmm. handle is BLD, build. Build. Yeah. So, so really emphasize this focus is on enabling builders to build right that you know that that's the foundational thing for you know for being able to deploy uh, a new and thriving economy is you know builders we have to enable builders to build and that you know devrels and 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 you know once we launch ist and get all that going right enabling builders is, well, so, is the thing so so would i be able to stake bld to get more bld or will i be staking bld to get more ist or both so uh, so there are already build rewards for of uh, BLD. Yep. Um, you know, and those will those will grow over time, for a while. That's the bootstrap phase. Yep. And once IST launches, then there will be, uh, or you know, once all the elements of IST launch, we're going to do a staged launch. Yep. But once the IST launches, then there will be um, IST rewards uh, as well. So yep. so initially there will be both rewards. IST rewards will grow with the economy. Once they pass some threshold, then the build rewards are expected to taper off. So, so is, is the BLD token inflationary or is there a, a burn mechanism that keeps it deflationary? Like how, how exactly, what, what, what do I it expect? It is inflationary. 
Yeah, so it it's is... like Atom in, in, in Cosmos Hub. It's inflationary. Um, I think the current new minting rate, though I, I hate the term inflationary there because our economist wince every time we say it. Uh, <laughs> but, but, um, uh, but so there is new minting, uh, 5% a year right now is what okay. the, you know, that was just, you know, got proposed in July um, or June or July or something and got turned on, you know, and, 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 um, uh, uh, and, and that, and the, the expectation, the plan has always been that that would go up. And then after a couple of years, that would taper down as IST rewards take over. Oh, um, okay. And, you know, and that real, and, and it's the growth of IST, right? You know, it's the growth of IST that reflects the growth of the economy, right? That's mm. one of those, you know, I mean, the, the, the bigger your economy, you know, the more IST that it needs, um, the more value the platform is driving, that helps drive value to 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 staking, uh, you know, and, and, and provide staking rewards. Okay, awesome. Now, I know I did ask you earlier about the roadmap, but we're on the roadmap section of the site now. So we've got um, quarter three for 2022, the main at phase one platform uh, preview release. And then, oh, I'm going backwards, aren't I? So you're going backwards. It's going to stop. Let's take it from the top. Let's take it from the top. So quarter three, um, all right, quarter three, 2021 ticked security audit kickoff. You've completed the BLD token distribution. The main at phase one has been ticked off as well. Then we've got the main at phase one platform preview release, the main at phase one inter protocol launch. And mm -hmm. then we have phase two, main at phase two permission smart contracts and yep. main at phase three permissionless smart contracts so is everything going as planned so far or has there been any hiccups along the way any delays oh uh, you know it it's it's there are science projects there there's always hiccups right you know there's COVID. That's crypto for you COVID was a hiccup right but, That's but um you know in terms of of our roadmap the set of stages has been surprisingly stable. You know, the, the <laughs> yeah, because stable is what we're all about right no now. No pun intended. Uh, no, so, uh, <laughs> you know, what's funny is we were planning to do the, exactly this rollout just for the Agoric platform. And when we were at some of these conferences talking to other people in the Cosmos ecosystem, you know, many of whom, you know, have, have helped, have contributed expertise, money, dollars, connection, everything else, right? Yep. And they heard what we're doing. It's just like, oh my gosh, a stable token backed by Adam. When can we have it? We need this, right? Mm. And that's that, That's what got, you know, we changed changed gears from, oh, right, our stable token is not just for Agoric, it's for the whole interchain. I mean, that's what we need is not, you know, I don't want a currency that I can only spend at a local amusement park. I want a currency I can spend, mm. you know, on my business or on, you know, buying Christmas presents or whatever the heck it is, right? And so, um, and so, so that sort of, you know, we were already planning to launch in that race, in, in, in that order, but suddenly it became a much bigger deal. So we're on this roadmap. Um, we are, we, you know, we are, we've got, we've got um, several uh, test nets that we've been running for um, the, for IST, um, oh, including stress nets with economists that are trying to find breaking scenarios yep. for liquidations or what awesome. have you, as well as bridges to a few, to a few other projects in Cosmos that are planning to use IST. Yeah. Um, we're, you know, we're, 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 we've got some final uh, features and security audits to get in, and then we will have the platform preview release coming real soon now, um, nice. with a goal towards the inner protocol launch, you know, in the next, in the next uh, uh, couple of months here. So, um, so, you know, and, and, the, and you know, uh, people should tune into, you know, upcoming community calls and that sort of thing, because we'll talk a lot more detail about specifically how, what order of events or what are we doing to launch portions of the inner protocol and gradually, you know, all of these things you want to walk before you run. So you want to mm. get started, enable IST, then add more, you know, add market depth and collateral and all these kinds of things. So, um, so, so yeah, we're on this roadmap, um, you know, uh, there are always hiccups, but you're an engineering organization to deal with hiccups, right? It's not that hiccups don't happen. It's that you have an experienced team members that, that know how to, you know, that know how to, how to, how to cope with them and, and, and keep the ball rolling. So. Well, that's the thing with test nets as well. You don't want to see and hear everything is going smoothly, especially during test net phase, because mm -hmm. that's not what test net is for. Test net is to yeah. deliberately find what is wrong, what can go wrong. What, what are the bugs? Where are the bugs? How are these yep. bugs you know, executed? And that's exactly what you you want to find problems. In a test Absolutely, net. yeah, yeah. And we had a big, we had a very big incentivized test net phase um, last year for a lot of the general infrastructure for the sort of this main net three. By the time we get there, and let me tell you, we learned a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and, 
and uh, and 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 you know did a lot of engineering as a result, as well as you know again we were planning to roll out. The, the stable token for local use, which would have had relatively small demand. Now suddenly, you know, it's rolling out to be a potential solution to a 10, the $10 billion interchain market. Um, and that's just a much bigger deal. So we've got to have all the liquidation, all the, you know, all these mechanics just have to have to be well understood and work well together and all those sorts of things. And that just requires a lot of system testing and, 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 and different configuration. And so, you know, we've we've deployed lots of uh, uh, systems previously, um, and so arranging that is, is is something we we know how to do, and it just it just takes time. You've got you discover things, you fix them, you move on to the next thing. I know if I was involved in a in a project and we were running a test net for let's say even six months, and they came back to me and said we found nothing wrong in six months, I'd be like, <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. no, you no, got it's a not security good. audit. They said everything's wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> can you at least that's... tell us what you tested? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was about to say that. Can you tell us what you tested? Because that's kind of scary. I don't believe now, nothing went wrong. We have we we've had people who have done a lot of secure systems engineering from from secure OSs to large scale commercial systems and financial payment instruments and so forth. Yeah. So many of our security reviews have in fact come back relatively speaking glowing, yeah. but. But what we required was, you know, really deep understanding of what did they analyze and how do we know that they would have, ha would, you know, found something if it was there or have a good understanding of, of, you know, what could have gone wrong and really did work to, 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 to test that we had addressed these things. Mm. And so, you know, you can do that, but, you know, you'd better be real sure, well, we did this and we understand the following about the architecture and that turns out to have the properties you look for. So we tried these other things and they proved that the properties were there yeah. and, you know, and, and, and so we've gotten some that are like that. So, so I am happy to report that, you know, that, that, that yeah, those will be published in the next, you know, couple of months mm. um, uh, that, that, that show that, you know, because a big chunk of our system is novel security architecture that's inspired by secure operating systems. And so it is quite different from, you know, the, the EVM models of the world. And so getting, you know, getting that through review where we made sure that we had experts that really did understand how it is that, that, that components were segregated from each other and yet could compose well, you know, that was a, that was a big important milestone to get over in our, in our, in our journey through security oh, audits to be able I to bet. get to production. And, and so very happy about that. Yeah, I bet, I bet. Now, just quickly back to your website. Um, We've got how your assets are protected. There's a complete security architecture, which means you can, get to, you can get to focus on building your vision. For developers, focus on what your smart contract does best while easily partitioning risk and protecting yourself from bugs in third-party code, all in the familiar language of JavaScript. And for market participants, with our smart contracts, you will either get what you wanted or get a full refund, even if the smart contract is buggy or malicious. Now, those are some... Huge. Words of confidence right there. <laughs> that's right. That's right. This is the smart contract. Remember I talked about a framework matters. This yep. is the smart contract framework we call Zoe. The property you just described is called offer safety. And like any safety property, memory safety, concurrency safety, type safety, you know, there is, really is a class of bugs that simply don't happen anymore, right? Mm. With the right concurrency architecture, you just don't get reentrancy bugs. Right, they're just gone. They're just off the table. Yeah. You know, with the right the right memory architecture, you just don't get dangling pointer bugs that were the that were the scourge of all the software that people deployed in the '80s, written in C++. Right, and so offer safety means you know yes, it's not throw money at a random number and hope something good happens, which is which is you know my characterization of most. Um, uh, blockchain UI right now is exactly that. You you know you go through a beautiful interface and then it says, so did you want to send three ETH to zero X nine five seven four? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> right? Maybe. Yeah, you know, I'm not sure that you know. And instead, we have this model of offers where you know businesses quid pro quo. There's another you know now we're in Latin rather than Greek, right? Mm. Um, where I'm gonna give you you know this IST in exchange for that NFT. Right. And if you can give me the NFT, if I don't win the auction, you don't get my money. Right. I get my yeah. money back. Right. Or yeah. if or if, you know, the auction's taking too long, you know, I rescind my offer. Give me my money back so I can exit. Right. And the and the nice thing about that is that's in the smart contract framework itself. So assets go in to escrow. 
the smart contract is told, hey, you've got some ISD, if only you provide satisfy the following requirements. Yep. And if it can satisfy them, great. But if the alpha exits before that satisfied, the infrastructure gives the money back. And sure. now, and the, the contract doesn't. And so it doesn't matter whether it's a rug pull, it doesn't matter whether it's a bug, it doesn't matter whether it's on purpose. The only thing the auctioneer can do is be a lousy auctioneer. They can't steal my money. Exactly, <laughs> yes. And that's a huge win, because again, Billions of dollars have been lost to having contracts. I mean, there's contracts out there where either you can't exit, no one can get the money, or mm -hmm. anyone can get the money, so you don't actually have security, or you know, or you know, it's sitting on everybody's money and it failed to return it, right? Yeah, scary and, stuff. Um, now, yeah, and we get rid of that. <laughs> yeah. So, to everybody watching, if Agoric sounds like of something of interest to you, feel free to check out the official website at agoric.com. And if you scroll down to the bottom of the website, you will also see join the community and you'll see their Twitter, their Telegram, their, I think that's the Discord button. I'm not a Discord user myself, but I think that's a Discord button. There's YouTube and LinkedIn socials as well. Feel free to join their awesome communities and say hello. Tell them Darko sent you from Huobi Global Live and even hassle them a little bit. You know, make their jobs a little bit more harder, so to speak. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's all we need, yeah. <laughs> Why not? Why not? Awesome. So, Dean, before we give this a wrap this evening, is there anything else you wish to discuss with regards to Agoric or even anything else? No, I, I mean, I'm really excited that, uh, uh, you know, Hobie listed Agoric. You know, I, Congratulations. You know, nice. we're, we're one of the very first um, uh, uh, Cosmos chains listed there. Mostly because, you know, it's a long-term project, right? This is about the long-term value of building a new economy. Yeah. But to do that, people have to have build tokens, right? They're going to have to have that in order to be able to set up their wallets once all this stuff uh, uh, on, on chain, once all mm. this stuff, uh, you know, not just our code, but other people's code uh, to, to get access to that. And so, you know, that, that's sort of a critical step forward in the ecosystem of having it be easier for engineers, developers, customers, what have you, to get build tokens to come participate. And so... Um, so that, you know, so it's, 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 you know, it's going to be, you know, lots of elements in this roadmap, not just ours, but as I said, other people in the community from foundation to third party developers that are already mm -hmm. building. Um, and we're just really excited to have, uh, uh, more people in, 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 you know, joining the community. Um, and, you know, and, and it's, it's, it's really about enabling them to join the community and bring their, you know, again, it starts with the builders, bring their develop, bring their ideas, yep. bring their requirements as customers, uh, bring their development talents to be able to, 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 to build the next generation of, of smart contracts in the world. So. Nice. So you was Huobi your first listing, was it? Huobi is our first listing, yes. Oh, wow. Yep. Good start. Mm -hmm. Very good start. You know, DeFi is happening in the Asia market where, you know, that's, that was... That seems like the right place to have to 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 have that listing. There's a lot of creative people, um, and and getting them thinking about that model and and how they can you know take build and do something with it. You know that's 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 uh, that's what we want to have happen. So nice. And and once again, agoric.com. Feel free to check it out. There's plenty of information on the website. I only just went through the first page on the website, but there's plenty plenty more to go through. And just quickly looking at it, I mean, by visiting the agoric.com website, you can also check out the wallet, the staking section, there's a vote section, the explorer section, there's economy, technology, security, papers and white paper, and so much more. There's, you can even get involved, there's roadmap events, you've got their socials, of course, they've got their own blog and company profile where you can check out the team. There's a career section and even a media kit for you to check out as well. And of course, a contact section for any other inquiries or even maybe some suggestions. You might have an extra idea for them. Perhaps they might be open to it. Why not? But that's more for the socials. Leave it for the socials. That's right. That's right. Well, the other thing is there's also, we, we also have a site on commonwealth.io slash agoric, um, where that's where a lot of the, uh, governance discussions happen for governance of the chain, which has been very active. And one of the exciting things is the community starting to take over the release process and, and you know, and, 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 and deployment process. So... Nice. Um, so yeah, you know, come join the community. <laughs> Why not? Like I said, join, say hello, Tom Darko sent you from Huobi and give him a hard time. <laughs> nah, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. All right, cool, cool. Well, it was a pleasure having you here tonight. And this was, it felt like the interview went so fast. 
<laughs> it did. But thank you very much. You are a, you have been an awesome host. The questions you got from the uh, community were great, and uh, and I look forward to hearing more from them. And hopefully, we get to see you back at some point in the future with further updates as well, Nagori. That'd be awesome as well. So Happy to. To everybody watching, uh, please, if you are watching on YouTube, subscribe, like, share, and retweet this video. The more you share, the more you help us grow, the more you help Agoric grow as well. And if you're watching on Facebook Live, shout out to everybody there. And any other platform, there are so many, shout out to everybody. If you can share this video, why not? We'd appreciate it and we'll bring more and more in the future. All right, awesome. So Dean, once again, I thank you so much for coming. And I wish you all the best with future endeavors. And hopefully we see you back here soon. And until next time, please be safe, be healthy, trade wise, and as always, rock on. Thank you.